Hi, in this video we will uh, create a measurement system and we will have focus on uh, data logging and monitoring and we will show how to implement such a system uh, with practical examples using LabVIEW and Visual Studio and c -sharp programming. We will go through the following parts. So first we will design the database uh, using Irvin. Then we will implement the tables uh, use store procedures and triggers using SQL Server and then in part 3 we will uh, create a data logging application using LabVIEW where we will log temperature data from a, a thermocouple uh, duct device from national instruments. In the last part we will create a data monitoring application using Visual Studio and C Sharp. Here you see an overview of the system we are going to create. So we are starting with the database. We are using SQL Server from Microsoft. So we are going to use Irvin in order to create the tables and design the tables. And then we will later create uh, views and stored procedures and some triggers in order to create our logic. And then we will create an application in LabVIEW where we uh, get measurement data from a DAC device, in this case a TC01 thermocouple device. So we will retrieve the data within the LabVIEW application and then we will save the data using a store procedure into the database. And then um, we will create a data monitor application in Visual Studio and using C Sharp where we will use some store procedures and views in order to uh, to, uh, to create a chart and a, and a table of the data within the database. So in this video we will use the following software. We will use Irvin for uh, database design or modeling. We will use SQL Server for database implementation. And we will use LabVIEW to create the data logging application. And then we will use Visual Studio in order to create uh, the data monitoring application. In order to get uh, data from the DAC device within LabVIEW, we need also to install the DAC-MX uh, driver software. And in order to communicate with the database from LabVIEW, we will use the LabVIEW SQL Toolkit in this example, which is uh, available as a free download from our web page. Uh, in this part, we will um, and design the database uh, using Irvin. Uh, let's start with some uh, basic uh, database uh, uh, theory and what we call ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams. So here we see a um, simple AR uh, diagram with two tables. Uh, we have a book table and we have primary keys and we have some columns. And we have a second table here called the chapter. This one also has a primary key and it also has a foreign key. So this uh, table points to the primary key in, in this table. In addition, it has some columns. So that's the basic features uh, in database modeling. Um, create the different uh, tables you need and the relationships between them. So Erwin is uh, very simple to use. You just use the entity tool here. So you click on entity tool and then you create the tables using the entity tools. And then you can use the tab and enter keys in order to give uh, tables a name and to create the different columns. So the column above this line is, is always the primary key. So in this uh, uh, data logging and monitoring system uh, we need to get values from uh, one or more sensors. In this case we will just use one sensor as an example, the TC01 thermocouple device. Um, and then, so we have some kind of sensor or we can have more than one. And then we need to uh, add some information about uh, the sensor, name, etc. 
Um, and then we need to have uh, a table that store all our uh, measurement data, the logging data. And we typically need uh, the value and date and time for the, um, for the value. And also in this example, we will convert the Celsius value we get from the DAC device uh, to a Fahrenheit value using a trigger within the database. So we will also create that trigger later. In addition, we will also store some uh, statistics data for the measurements. So we will store the average or mean value and the maximum on, and mean value for the data within the database. And also to save these values, we will use a trigger. So here you see an example of the design we have uh, created in uh, Irvine. Uh, this is a very simple uh, design. It could be much more complicated or more advanced, but this is just a very simple example in order to illustrate a simple uh, data logging and monitoring system. So the first um, table we have created is the sensor type table. Uh, and this is just the primary key. And then we have the sensor type name. Uh, so here we could have different types of sensors we could have uh, in this case we have a TC01 thermocouple sensor but we could have uh, all the kind of temperature sensors or all the kind of sensors that measure all other kind of uh, data and here we have the sensor table uh, where we have the sensor name because we could have many sensors with the same type so in this case we could have uh, five different TC, uh, five different sensors of type TC01, and then they need to have a unique name. So it could be TC01, sensor1, sensor2, etc. And then next we have this uh, measurement data table, which we store the actual uh, temperature data. So we have this uh, timestamp, we have the measurement value, and also we have uh, or storing the Fahrenheit value, which we are going to use a trigger in order to, to insert data within this uh, column. And in addition, we have a data that store the statistics data uh, for the measurements. And in this case, we just store the average or mean value, uh, the minimum data and the maximum uh, data. In so this is what we call a logical model. We also have what we call a physical model, where we see or also specify the data types for the different columns. So typically, the primary key is just an integer. Uh, this is uh, a name, so we use, uh, typically use a bar char. Here you see uh, this is a timestamp for the measurement. So then here we can use a date time data type for the measurement values we can use uh, a float and the same for the statistics data and also for all the primary keys if i just click on the tables click column properties and then i select the proper column we can also specify the, the primary key to be a so-called identity column. So I just, for all the primary key, I set uh, generated identity and starting value one and increment value one for all, for all the primary keys in all the tables. In, the, in that way, we don't need to worry about the primary keys. They are automatically generated by the system uh, when we create these tables in, uh, in SQL Server. So we'll use this, uh, these tables as a, as a base for the tables we are going to implement in SQL Server. So we can go to Actions and Forward Engineering and Schema. And then here we can create a SQL script for our tables. So we need to specify what we need to include in the script. 
and typically all you just need to create a table so we remove procedures etc on a column we need to create uh, remove everything we don't need views we are not going to create any views here index no index here we need to create primary keys phone keys and if we have some unique columns in this case we don't have anything and uh, triggers you don't want to have any triggers here because we are going to create the triggers within SQL Server later the same with views then when we are <coughs> happy with the settings you can click preview and then we get a preview of all our tables and then if we are happy with the settings and the script we can just click OK and uh, save and then we can save it on, on our hard drive so here uh, you see this uh, the table script I just created from Irvin so you can just open it in uh, with the notepad so here you see we have this part create the sensor type table this part create the sensor table this part create the data uh, sorry the table that stores the statistics and then finally we have this table for the measurement data so this script we will insert it into SQL Server later in this part we are going to implement the tables based on the script we created with Irvin and then we will create some uh, uh, data within the tables we will also create store procedures triggers and views which we will use in our lab view and C, C sharp applications so uh, here we see the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio uh, this is a tool we use to to manipulate and get an overview of our database so here we can create new databases we can create tables we can uh, write and use uh, SQL queries etc so we will use this tool in order to implement the tables within the SQL server in order to do that we need to know some basic structured query language uh, here you see some query examples so basically we have four different types of queries we have insert select update and delete so here you see an example where we are using insert so we typically use the insert in order to insert data within a specific table in this case we insert into student table name number and school id like this here we use the select in order to get data from a specific table and here another example where we are use select to get and data from the school table where all the school IDs is above a specific uh, limit and we have the update which we use in order to to update or change the data within the database and finally we have the delete uh, statement if you want to delete some data from the database so now I have opened uh, the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and then I can click open here and then go to, to the script we created uh, within Irvin so I just open that script and here you see this is the script that create the tables we need for our uh, data logging and monitoring system so you can just click on execute and these tables will be inserted in our system so here when you insert them the tables will appear on the tables in our database so we have the measurement data sensor sensor type and the tables that store the statistics data when we are when we have finished uh, creating the tables we typically need to create some uh, data within the tables so i have made a script for that so i just open the script i already made 
So here you see a script I have made in order to, to insert some data within some of the tables. So uh, since um, in this case we will use the TC01 thermocouple, I insert this one as a sensor type within the sensor type table. And then next, since you are only using one TC01 um, sensor in this case, I have just named it TC01 and sensor number one and insert that name in the sensor table. And then I just uh, insert some um, uh, start data into the statistics table and just uh, generate a record within that uh, table and just insert zero for all for all the data. So when you run these tables, this data will be stored within the tables. So let's take a look at the different tables. We can click or uh, make a query, select all from sensor type, click execute, and you see uh, the sensor type is stored in the sensor type table. And then we have the sensor table, and then uh, sensor number one of this sensor type is stored in the sensor table. Since we are going to use uh, LabVIEW to store uh, values from the thermocouple device within the database, we will create and use a stored procedure that store the values from the sensor within the database. In addition, we will create uh, two triggers and the one, one trigger that converts the temperature from Celsius and also saves uh, the value from the sensor in Fahrenheit within the database. We will also create a trigger that calculates uh, the average, the maximum value and the minimum value for the temperature data within the database. In our uh, C-sharp application, the monitoring application, we will also use a view which we will use to get data from the database from multiple tables. So in addition, we will create this store procedure that uh, saves the data to the um, database and then we will create these two triggers. So let's start with the store procedure. I already made the store procedure, so I just open it from my hard drive. And database, store procedure. And I just double click to open it. Here is the store procedure that saves uh, data uh, within the database. Um, so here, we create the store procedure with this specific name, save measurement data. And this procedure has two input uh, parameters. One, the first one is the name of the sensor. And the next one is the measurement value from the sensor. And then based on these inputs, it finds the sensor ID, the primary key based on the sensor name. And then it inserts the measurement data into the measurement data table, which has these columns, the sensor ID, measurement value and the measurement timestamp. So then we, this is the measurement value and then we use the get date function within SQL Server in order to generate the date and time for the measurement. And then if we click on the execute, this store procedure will be saved in the database under programmability and store procedure. And here you see the stored procedure is saved in the database and ready to use in our LabVIEW application. Next, we will create the two triggers we need. So we just, since I already made them, I just click open, database, triggers. So let's start with the uh, convert to Fahrenheit trigger. So it's the same here. We create the trigger using the create command and here we have the name of the trigger and here we specify which table this trigger should be stored on. 
So every time we insert data or update data within the measurement data table, this trigger will be executed. So in this case, I just declare some uh, variables and then I use a specific uh, table name called inserted, which is something we can use within triggers. So this inserted table stores the table, uh, sorry, the data from the table we just inserted into. And then based on that one, we can get the measurement ID and the measurement value, which is just was inserted in the table. And then we can calculate the formula or use the formula to convert the measurement value to Fahrenheit. And then we can update the measurement data table with the value for the Fahrenheit like this. In order to insert this uh, trigger into the database, we just click execute and then this trigger should be located on the measurement data table. So we click on plus on the measurement data table and then triggers and then we have this trigger stored here. So let's create the other trigger as well. This calculate statistic trigger. So just open it and here, create trigger and the name of the trigger and this trigger should be um, on the same table. So the measurement data table. Here we create some um, um, uh, local variables. Here we get the sensor ID from the inserted table and then we calculate the average value, the minimum value and the maximum value from the measurement data. In this case we use built-in functions within SQL Server that can handle these operations. And then finally we just update the statistics uh, data table with the average uh, data, the minimum data and the maximum data for this specific sensor. And same here, when we execute and insert this trigger into the uh, database, the trigger should appear under the table triggers. And here you see the trigger has been inserted into the uh, database and are ready to use. Finally, we will also create a view which we will use in a data monitoring application. So I just open the view I just created, database views, get measurement data. So in this case, I have created a view that are getting data from multiple tables. So this view get data from the sensor table and also from the measurement data table. In order to link this data correctly, using a so-called inner join and then we join the sensor the primary key in the sensor table and then we join it with this primary key in the measurement data like this so here we link those two together uh, these two tables together using an inner join and here we just list and uh, the columns we need from these two tables. And when we insert this view into the database using the execute command, the view should appear under views uh, like this. Typically you need also to right click you know, and click refresh in order to, to show the view under this, uh, this node. So now we have made the tables, we have made a store procedure, we have made two triggers and we have made a view. And now we are ready to start creating the data logging application within LabVIEW. So now we have created our uh, database and we have implemented in SQL Server. We have made store procedures, triggers and views. And now we are ready to create the data logging application using LabVIEW. So here you see an overview of our system so far. So we have used Irvin in order to design the tables and then we have created a script and then we have 
implemented the tables using that script and in addition we have made some triggers and stored procedures and now we need to create application within LabVIEW that retrieve the data from the DAC device and store the data within the database. So here you just, is just see a simple sketch of the application. So in this application, uh, in the use interface, we will just show the values in a chart. And for each interval, we get a specific value which we will store in the database. In order to communicate with the database, we will use, in this case, the LabVIEW SQL Toolkit, which I have made. You can download it for free from this uh, website. It's very simple to use. You use the open subVI in order to open communication with the database. And then in order to get data from the database, you use the SQL select. Or if you want to insert some data into the database, you use the SQL execute subVI. When you're finished, you need to use the SQL close in order to close the communication with the database. Here is a uh, simple example where I have used the SQL toolkit. So we use a while loop and outside the while loop, I open a connection to the database. Here we can either use or create an ODBC connection. We create the ODBC connection in the ODBC panel in Windows. Or we can use a connection string. And then inside the while loop, we use the SQL execute in order to insert data. And in this case, I just uh, get a value from a DAC device. Uh, I show the value on the front panel, like this. And then I use the format into string in order to, to create an SQL command that inserts the data within the database. And then when you click the stop button, the while loop stops and the connection to the database also is closed. Here you see an example of the front panel we are going to create. So we are just creating or using a waveform chart in order to plot the data from the sensor. And we also, in addition, use an ordinary numeric control in order to see the values from the latest value from the sensor. And in addition, we store the value into the database. And, uh, when we click the stop, the program stops and the logging stops. So here you see the block diagram for this uh, simple application. So here we have this SQL open in order to open the communication to the database. We have a while loop. And inside the while loop, we get the values from the DAC device. And we store, store the value within the chart and we show it in this uh, numeric control. And in addition, we save the value to the database using the format into string and this SQL execute uh, sub BI. And when we stop the program, we stop the while loop and we also close the connection to the database. So here you see the front panel for the LabVIEW application. And if you click Control E, you will see uh, the block diagram for this uh, application. So here we open it, here we close the connection, and here we insert value values within the database. So here I have used the store procedure we just created, and the input parameters is the sensor name, and here we just use some formatting in order to format the value before we store it into the database. So let's try this application. So here on the front panel, we just click the run button. And in addition, of course, you need to connect the sensor, the TC01 sensor, and then you can just click run. And then you see we're getting values from the sensor. 
and here we also see the latest value from the sensor. And let's now open uh, SQL Server. And you can see if any values are stored in the database. So select all from a measurement data table. And then you can click on execute. And you see we are going we are storing values into the database. So now we have 246 rows and click execute one more. We have 256 rows. And click once more. Now we have 263 rows. So you see the values are stored within the database. Um, here is the timestamp which is stored. The measurement value is stored and also the Fahrenheit value is stored and this value are generated by the trigger we just created. In addition we can see if any statistics data is stored, so select all from the statistics data table. So we can just mark it and click execute and then you see the average data, the minimum data, and the maximum data are stored in the database. So these data are generated by the trigger we just created. So you can click execute once more, and you see for each time a new value are, st are stored in the measurement data table, these are updated. Like this. So that's uh, our data logging application. It's uh, quite simple. So we just make a simple plot and we save the value to the database. So uh, now we want to create the data monitoring application uh, using Visual Studio and C Sharp. Uh, so far we have uh, designed our database using Irvine and we have implemented tables, uh, views, stored procedures and triggers uh, within SQL Server. And then we created a uh, data logging application using LabVIEW. Uh, so in this final part, we are going to monitor uh, the data uh, where we are going to use Visual Studio and C Sharp. So we have our now uh, our data in our database. So the data are logged by the LabVIEW application. And then we are going to create a Visual Studio application in order to view the data that is stored in the database. So here you see a simple uh, sketch of our graphical user interface. We are going to use a chart uh, control in order to, to plot the values inside the database. We are go also going to use a data grid view where you can show all the values, each point that is stored in the database. So we have the date time, the value and the Fahrenheit value for each data point that is stored in the database. In addition, we have uh, or showing the average value, the minimum value and the maximum value in these three text boxes. So these are ordinary text boxes. These are ordinary labels. Here we are using a chart object or a control and here we are using the data grid uh, control. So now I have opened uh, Visual Studio and in this case I just uh, created a new project and in this case I just created an ordinary WinForms application and in this uh, Windows uh, application I used a chart control. You find the chart control in the toolbox so you can just search for it, chart, and then you can just drag it in. Here I have used um, a data grid. So here, just search for it and just drag it in. And here I have used three text boxes in order to store the minimum value, maximum value, and the average value. So that's our uh, graphical user interface in the data, data monitoring application. So let's just uh, start application, click start. 
then here you see a plot or a chart of our data points here we see a data grid view with all the measurements value timestamp measurement value and the Fahrenheit value and also the minimum maximum and average value is uh, calculated like this so let's also start the logging application and run that uh, at the same time and we are getting new values within the database and also you see here now the values are in this case are updated every fifth second in this case we are in this application using a timer where we update the chart the graph uh, the chart and the graph or the graph uh, or the data grid view and this text field with new data from the database every fifth second of course you can set this interval uh, lower or higher but you see the values where we logged where we are logging from the logging application which is stored in the database are now monitored in the monitoring application and new values are added at the end of this uh, data grid view and these one also are updated according to the data so let's take a close look at how we have created this application so you just uh, stop it and you go back to the, the to the Visual Studio and the first thing I created was this uh, form which is our graphical uh, user interface and then we just inserted the controls we needed and then next I have uh, created a class so I just right click here and add new item and then a class and a proper name so this is the class I have made so this class consists of or actually it's two classes inside here so I made one class called measurement data which is getting the measurement data and another class is which is getting the data uh, the statistics data from the database so let's start with the measurement uh, uh, data class so the first part I have created um, properties or fields for the values I need to get from the database so we need to get the measurement ID and uh, the measurement timestamp the measurement value and the Fahrenheit value and then I have created a mesh uh, sorry a method called get measurement data and the output of this method is a list or a table of uh, data from the database first thing we need to do is to to get or create the connection string so we are able to connect to the database we are going to use in this case I have created or stored the connection string in a file called appconfig so every uh, WinForm application has a appconfig which you can use to store different kind of configurations so in this case I have used this file in order to store the connection string so here we have the name of the connection string and here the connection string uh, with the data source this is the name of the date uh, uh, the server and then we have the name of our table etc like this so that's the connection string in the app stored in the app config file uh, next in order to get the connection string into my code I have used something called the configuration manager which is getting the values from the app uh, config file in order to use the configuration manager manager we first need to go to references 
and click add reference and then we need to um, get the value oh sorry they get the, uh, the proper dll so click on assemblies and then we can we need to find the configuration so you see here i have so this is the dll file we need to add to our project so you just select it system configuration and click ok and then this um, dll will be stored here under references in addition we need to to use this uh, using in order to use uh, the namespace within our uh, code like this and the next piece of the code i have uh, just created a list of these fields we are going to uh, get from the database and we are using this um, line of code next we need to uh, connect to the database using this uh, command and when we have connected to the database we can start uh, to either get data or insert data into the database in this case we are going to get data from the database so here we are going we are creating the query we are going to use so we are selecting measurement id measurement timestamp measurement value and the Fahrenheit value from our database and here we are going here we are used the view we created earlier because we are getting values from two different tables and then it's very easy to create a view uh, in order to get these values from the database so we get these values from our sensor sensor name tc01 number one and then we can open a connection to the database and we use this SQL command to start a connection to the database and then we use the SQL data reader in order to get data based on this query and then we just check if there are actually some values within our database so if there are values we go into this piece of code and then we just use a while loop and then um, we save the value within this uh, list we have made earlier and then we are finished and then we can return this uh, list of data in all our uh, measurement value from the database So this is the class and the method we are going to use with in our uh, form. So let's open the form code. So form one dot C sharp, which is the code file. So you just click here on open the code for our form. So here is our form and then here under when the form is uh, loaded into memory or started we have made so first we have made these object objects based on our class also we have to remember to to include the namespace in our application from our class and then we have uh, made a method here called uh, fill uh, data grid which is getting data from the database into the data grid and then we have a similar method which is getting values from the database into the chart so let's start with the data grid uh, when the 
forms uh, is loaded into memory and we just uh, execute the field data grid method and the field chart method and also we have a method for the statistics data so when the program starts this this method is uh, started and the code inside here is executed just filling data into the data grid and then next we are filling data into the chart so we use uh, this um, methods for the chart so we start by clearing the chart and then we just add a series you can just call it uh, measurement data and then in this case we also need to specify the chart type in this case which is a series chart type of line here also we can set uh, lots of properties for the chart we can set different colors we can set x axis uh, values minimum and maximum we can do the same for the y axis etc so we can set lots of properties here i will just use these few properties in order to show a simple example where we are using this chart and then i just fill in values into the chart using this for each uh, loop So we also do the same for the statistics. So we have in our class file, we have made in addition to this measurement data class, we have made another class called statistics data, which is very similar to this class. But in this case, we get the average data, the minimum data and the maximum data from the database. So the code is almost identical as the previous one. So we connect to the database and we get the connection string which is stored in app config and here we have the select statement you just get this statistics data from the statistics data table and then we store them into these uh, objects here or properties and then in our form we just uh, call this uh, field statistics fields methods and then we store the value within these uh, text boxes we have here. I guess that's all. In addition, we have also used a timer. So you can just find the timer in the toolbox, search for it, timer, and just include it in our form. So we are using a timer in this case. So we are using a timer since the data are continuously updated in the database from the logging application so we're using a timer in order to get new fresh data every five seconds in this example so let's see how this is implemented in our form so here this is our form and startup method so here we are just initialize the timer and we set the interval to be 5000 milliseconds this means the timer is executed every five seconds and also we need to start the timer and then we need to create a timer event so this piece of code is executed every five seconds and in this case we just get the latest data from the database and we update the data grid, the chart, and the fields with the statistic information. So as you see, it's uh, quite easy to make a um, system like this, where we have a data logging application. We have a database that is storing the data from the data logging application. And then we have a data monitoring application that is monitoring the data stored in the database. So here we have uh, the lab application and here we have the final monitoring application which is getting or monitoring the data every five seconds in a chart in a data grid view and we have some statistics data.
and we have used Irwin in order to design and modeling the database and we have used Microsoft SQL Server in order to implement the database, the tables, the store procedures, views and triggers. And then we have used LabVIEW in order to create the data logging application and get or, or retrieve the values from the DAC device. And then finally, we have used Visual Studio and C Sharp and created a simple Windows application that are monitoring the data and plotting the data from the database. If you want to learn more, I recommend some of these uh, tutorials I have made. All these tutorials are available from my website. So here we have a tutorial of introduction to LabVIEW, introduction to database systems, introduction to structured query language, uh, introduction to database communication in LabVIEW, using SQL Server in C Sharp, introduction to Visual Studio on C Sharp, and we also have data acquisition in LabVIEW. So I guess that's all. So good luck with your uh, measurement system and uh, data logging and monitoring system.